day, Brittle Planet listeners. This is Eric Peterson, quarantining from Salt Lake City, and today I have the honor to be joined by Terry Leroy. Terry, how are you today? Doing great, Eric. How you doing? I'm good. Where are you quarantining from? Well, upstate New York, uh, Oswego to be exact, We're right, uh, like right on Lake Ontario. Nice. Um, yeah, so I'm just north, like 30 miles north of Syracuse. So you, you, you're like the rest of us, you're actually quarantining. Well, I'm actually, I'm actually not physically quarantining. But yes. We're, you know, we're doing, we're doing all that, you know, we've got masks and, you know, over at my, my company, uh, the jewelry company, people, you know, the employees, everybody has to get the temperature taken, you ask the questions. It's just, you know, and then, you know, the typical scenario with all the stores and yeah, we're just you know, dealing with the daily COVID challenges. <laughs> yes, yes. So how was your holidays? Holidays were were really good, but I keep saying this to everybody. They're like, How was your holidays? I'm like, They're they were too short. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I'm like, I just I want more time, please. I need more time. <laughs> I, I agree I would have to agree with you too. It's yeah. Al- it would be it's always nicer to have more time. Yeah, but uh, you know, we'll take it where we can get it. But it was great. Good, good. to see family and and friends of course it was that was a little bit challenging too i've got a pretty big family and you know we we did basically some drive-bys yeah (laughs) yeah stop in handed some presents through the through the doorway we did a couple of gatherings that weren't um they weren't with a lot of people and we just kind of you know brothers siblings and you know brothers and sisters came in and out so it wasn't like the whole group of 20 or 25 of us good good so we're here to talk about your new project, um, aptly titled yeah, "The Roy 13, Correct? Yeah, yeah. How, how did so how did this project come together? So that really, you know, back to COVID. Sorry, but no, it's fine. <laughs> it's it's born. It's born. The the project is born out of COVID. Wow. Um, you know, all the guys that we've got playing in this, we probably would have never gotten together had it not been for that situation. So we were looking for. Um, you know, looking for some things to do. And I, we, uh, in my project, Granny Four Barrel, we had some, one event that we had planned was the Ride for Ronnie event in uh, in LA. That was gonna be in May of 2020. Mm-hmm. So we were all geared up to, you know, do this benefit, super excited about it. But then COVID happened earlier in the year and all those events got postponed. And so I was still in, ronnie dio mode i was like man i really wanted to do this and you know what can we do and i don't know nobody's playing any shows anywhere i, I got an idea how about let's re- record a, a ronnie song and, and let's um donate the proceeds and so i got a hold of my my producer uh good friend david bendeth and we've been recording granny four barrel music and uh i told him you know about the idea and he was like oh this is yeah let's do it i uh, let's get some let's round up some some players and I was like all right who do you have in mind and so we started making phone calls and got all these great guys and here we are yeah you ended up with the guy a couple of the guys from evidence evanescence and uh of mice and men and yeah. I, it's it's a, it's a great lineup yeah again it isn't it crazy because it's like we typically would have never I mean we probably would have met I I knew Aaron and Polly via remotely because we've been doing some co-writing anyways through david bendis okay. for granny four barrel for granny four barrel but i didn't personally know troy or will or the other guitar player sammy baller and uh yeah it's pretty cool how it all happened and then you know we get all of us together and we record this song and it man i love the way it turned out oh it turned out amazing i mean y- your voice it has hints of ronnie dio and you you capitalize on that and it sounds great it's not it's not like you're trying to be ronnie but you're just trying to do it justice and you do it justice oh dude thank you for that i appreciate that yeah i mean nobody's gonna be ronnie dio and his voice is (laughs) yeah (laughs) one of the greatest voices in heavy metal ever but i will say that i've been hugely inspired by ronnie uh, in his singing style, like other singers uh, back in the back in the day too, the, you know the operatic guys, Bruce Dickinson, Helen, yeah. um, Jeff Tate. So there's you know the vibrato, there's some there's some things that are indicative of those of that singing style for classic rock, and 
and I, and I love singing in that that style. So, yeah, man, thank you. So the so I want I want to I read read that you actually were playing part of your gr- Granny Four Barrel sets down in in L.A. and Wendy Dio actually came to your show. Is that right? That's correct. Yeah, she was there for a whole show. We did a show at the Whiskey. Yeah, it was a crazy evening. It was um, it was a the headline show. It was actually like an event. It was a, a collaborative multi musician Spinal Tap event. Nice. So they they do this they do this thing there at the Whiskey, and we were the direct support for it. Granny Floor Bell. Um, so it was a packed house. You know, you know, I don't know, twenty thirty musicians were there, and um. Yeah, it, Wendy Deal was there, and that was that was a huge honor to to um, have her be at the show. And we finished off the set with "Stand Up and Shout," because I've always been singing, you know, for years. Just whatever band I've been in, there's always some kind of a, a Ronnie Dio song in the set, whether yeah. it's Old Sabbath or Rainbow or you know even Elf. We played some Elf songs live. Nice. Uh, so that was that was a that was an honor. She was there and she really loved it. And um, a couple of nights later, we we made an appearance at the Bull for Ronnie event. And uh, when we got back home from LA, she invited us to play the the ride for Ronnie event. Oh, that's... so it kind of started like kind of started like that. And we, you know, she was she was super cool. And again, it was a huge honor. Wow, that's really that's really cool. So she then pretty much said, "Let's do this." Well, n- yes and, and no. So when we presented the idea, so once the Ronnie Ride for Ronnie event got canceled, then when we had the idea to record this song, we presented her with the idea, and she said, "Well, that sounds wonderful. You know, we'd love to hear what you do because." You certainly wouldn't expect anybody to commit to, yeah, we're going to really yeah. get behind this. I yeah. really need to hear it. So <laughs> that was, you know, a little bit of anxiety for me because I'm like, okay, we're we're going to do the absolute best job we can do on this. And if she loves it, awesome. If she doesn't, you know, we'll still put it out anyways because we're going to you know, donate 100% of the proceeds to the foundation regardless. But if she puts a stamp on it, wow, that's going to be incredible. And she did. Nice. She loved it, and the board, the board of directors at Stand Up and Show unanimously said, "Yeah, this is awesome." Um, and that was like, I just was beside myself. <laughs> you know, she gave us a quote. It was in the press release. It was just, you know, it's it's really, That's really, great. really cool, man. That's great. Did and so when you guys recorded this, my understanding was you guys, you still haven't met some of the guys actually. I haven't. You know, it's all phone calls and, and Zoom calls. That's it. It's all remote. Everything, the recording process and and everything we've done, um, you know, communication between us has been that way remotely. Nice. So, so for me, I mean, this song definitely has lots of uh, personal meaning to me. Um, but what does it, the song, mean to you personally? I just love. Well, there's a, there's a few a few different elements to it. I mean, as far as just a straight out of the gate, 220 beats per minute rock song, mm-hmm. it's got a great riff. It moves. It's got plenty of energy. And then you mix that with the theme, which is uh, you know self empowerment, uh, the power within inside yourself. Stand up and shout. You know, speak your truth. Um, it it appeals to me. It's it, it all works. I mean, it's a great song all the way around. Yeah. Yeah, and it and actually to me too, this this song is very timely in itself. Um, there's a there's a little bit of a political side to it too, in, in that we are you know we're in a time when it's time to stand up and shout. That's yeah, exactly exactly right. Will Hunt said that in the the Zoom video call that we did with uh, the interview we did with Matt Penfield. Oh, did he really? Um, yeah, he actually. Well, we talked about that. He had he didn't he didn't actually say it, but I quoted him there. We were all talking on the via on Zoom, and I was like, "Hey, Will said because ah. he had just he had texted me um, when we were first doing the song. He goes, "Hey, man, this has a lot of political relevance. Do you realize that?" And I was like, "You know, you're right. It does. It does. It, it's very very timely." Yeah. So, yeah, and, and and this year, Matt, it marks the ten year passing of Ronnie too which is which is a very you know 
coincides all with it very nicely. So it does. I know. So twenty twenty is coming to a close here in a day. I know. I know. And, uh, I I I saw a a meme this morning that said. The first rule of 2020 is you don't talk. Our first rule of 2021 is you don't talk about 2020. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Yeah, and and, uh, I guess we'll we'll see what happens. Yeah, and I'm thinking thinking somebody's going to reference 2020 in 2021. (laughs) Yeah, I'm thinking so too. So the and for me the song. I mean personally the song, and the foundation and everything. Has I mean it brings back a lot of memories. I mean as sure as does for you as as far as Dio because I remember buying Holy Diver at the record store as and and then continuing on and I mean that Holy Diver was my was my first Dio album I ever had. Oh yeah, yeah it was great. I mean I played those those records over and over and over. Um, I've you know immersed myself over the years in in everything Dio because um, I just. I just love Ronnie's voice. I love his writing style. Love his persona. Yeah. Um, you know, was, yeah, everything about everything about Dio. And you know that the old Elf music. Um, there's just a, there's just a, it's just awesome, yeah. awesome music. Yeah, yeah. And the and for me also the I have to say that um, being having had cancer myself i the, it means a lot to me that you guys re- you did this and you're raising money for cancer too um i i hate to sell, call myself a a cancer survivor i i never loved that word um because to me the word survivor means like almost helplessness or a victim or a hostage and so i always call myself mm-hmm. a, a cancer conqueror you know and and for me that's 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 what I want to be is and this song brings out my inner power from my Viking an- ancestry that you know we fought a battle and we conquered conquered you know what I mean yeah I like that Eric yeah con- uh, to conquer it I, I like the sounds of that because that's exactly what you did yeah because you know just being a survivor it means you you almost like a helplessness so, yeah yeah. So I, for me, yeah. I, I love this. I love it because, you know, any chance we can get to beat the shit out of cancer as much as it beats the shit out of us, we need it. Mm-hmm. So Yeah, I agree. I agree completely. And, and the song has a lot of meaning to me in that way, too, because uh, there's you know a number of folks in my circle, family and friends that have... Uh, well, Ben, my new term now is Ben Cancer Conquerors. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 I like it. No, but but that's uh, yeah. So the song it has, you know, it's 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 got a lot of meaning for me, and the the cause, every, everything that goes along with this. So yeah. it feels good. I'm glad we were able to do something good with with our downtime, and the song seems to be doing really well. Good. It's got, I don't know, I think it's got like close to 150 thousand streams on Spotify. The nice. uh, the video that we put up on Facebook. I mean that thing's. Got four hundred and over four hundred thousand views, uh, twenty six hundred shares, eight hundred comments. Nice. And you know that's a lot. That's a lot of engagement. And, it is. And it's all positive. So what's what's next for this project? Where are you guys going to go with it? So, Will and I have been talking, and uh, Troy as well, and you know we decided that we want to explore this project more we you know the the chances that we would actually try to be you know make this a project to create a band wasn't even on the the radar initially but yeah uh will has uh been doing some recording with me since then and uh via david bendis and we've got some original tracks and we're trying to decide whether we you know, because it's like, well, what is Leroy 13? I mean, it started out as a collaboration. It wasn't really a band. Mm-hmm. So, you know, the other guys, I guess if it was, if, if it's a practical situation for everybody, everyone has told me they would love to be able to play. But as you know, Aaron's the singer for Of Mice and Men. Mm-hmm. Once everything starts back up again, you know, each guy has their own separate projects. Yeah. But, It'd be nice to put something else out as Leroy 13 and 
see what transpires. Maybe we'll get all the guys that were on this collaborative effort, and maybe not, but at least we're going to have a few of them. So, uh, you know, what do we do? Do we put out another cover? Do we put out an original track? It's a uh, it's a decision we're we're kind of in the midst of right now, but it's exciting, and yeah. I think we're going to do something. That's great. I mean, it it would be great, and then and then if you guys to cap it all off, if you guys could play it at one of the Ronnie Dio uh, festivals or the you know the his support things, that would be amazing. That would be amazing. Um, so I got to ask you, I know that Granny's probably in the high risk group for, and so she's probably <laughs> under sh- strict lockdown, but I'm sure she's finding a way to kick ass. What What's going on with Granny these days? Yeah, you know, well, the thing is, you, you'd think Granny was in the high risk category. Yeah. But she's a badass metal granny so yeah that's true <laughs> you know that's true the rock keeps her alive right and she's been around for eight and uh she's doing good and you know i've got some good news because early part of 2021 and i'm talking you're probably going to see something in february nice we have uh we have a video and a, and a brand new song that was about to be released before covid and that thing threw a monkey wrench into everything. So we're coming back out. Nice. Uh, with something new. Nice. I'm excited yeah, for man. that. I'm I'm always excited to have to have Granny just setting it straight. <laughs> yeah, we had we had a lot of fun playing down in Salt Lake City. Um, I think we were there a couple of times. We were there with Texas Hippie once, and I think we were we there with CKY too. I think yeah, we were. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I saw you yeah. on the the Texas Hippie. It was uh, you, Texas Hippie, and Coburn the Lotus. That's right. That's right. That, yeah, that was a good show. Yeah, that was a that great was, show. Uh, what, what was that? What was that club? Metro. Metro. Yeah, is that still is that still there? As far as I know, it's still there. I mean, you never know with what's okay. happened this year. Yeah, yeah. So. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, that was a cool show. That was the that was the kickoff show of the tour. Yes, it was. That's right. That's right. Yep. Yep. That's right. Well, Terry, I'm excited on all fronts um, with what's going on here. Granny and Leroy 13, it sounds like 2021 is going to be a great year for you. Well, I appreciate that, man. And, and, and you know, you as well. Um, you're going to have your hands full here because, you know, once music starts back up. Yeah. I mean, you got you got a lot of stuff to cover. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So yeah. I'm hoping that... Uh, I get to see Granny again, and um, oh hell yeah! So, and and who knows so what will come out of this Leroy Thirteen? It might we might see them too. Yes, yes. Well, you're going to see another track from us, anyways. Because Good. It's a lot of fun. There's some awareness about the project now. I, I like multitasking. It's great to be in both projects. Um, I can just kind of bounce between both and i and i love it i love the way it feels and i like to stay busy musically so yeah i'm excited man i'm just just getting ready for you know a new chapter in 2021 do you do you feel like one kind of fuels the other i think that it does right it's like a cross-pollination i mean yeah if we're doing something on because this whole time we've been promoting the Leroy 13 song you know the, the stand up and shout deo track there's always reference back to Granny and yeah. and and all the other players as well, you know, the projects that, that they're in. So it's yeah. cross reference and just like we're talking right now, you know, we're talking about Granny but then it leads back to this and Yeah. I think it's a good thing. It just, is just more awareness. Yeah. Yeah. Well thanks Terry. I appreciate your time and um I look forward to everything Terry and twenty twenty one. Thank you, Eric, and I appreciate it as well. Everything you do to support the rock and metal community and, uh, and you know this musical endeavor. Thank you so much. You're welcome. We'll talk to you soon. All right. Take care, man. You too.